it going everybody? Good morning for those of you that are on the East Coast and uh, good afternoon, good evening to everybody else that is joining here. We're going to be going over some uh, triad pairs today for this live stream. Um, working on different kinds of triads. Um, basically a six note uh, scale that's being used today. Um, gonna maybe play a little tune for you up front, just play a nice little blues and try and demonstrate some of this hexatonic stuff. And then we're gonna talk about three different ways to incorporate this into our playing. <clears throat> sound to play over tunes. I always like applying things that I'm shedding uh, to a blues because uh, you know the blues is the kind of the foundation of this music and uh, this harmony and this improvising uh, so it's a really uh, nice thing to kind of put things on top of that we're checking out and learning. Uh, before we get started into the lesson today I just want to make sure that you know that I will be keeping an eye on the chat so those of you that are joining me live here uh, will have uh, I'll be able to look at that, and if you have any questions or anything like that during the live stream, I'd be happy to uh, check them out, read them out loud, uh, and talk about and answer them for you. So uh, just keep an eye on that chat, you know, uh, if you want uh, to ask anything as I'm going along, um, or any comments, anything like that are definitely appreciated. Also, everything in the description are links to Jazz Lesson Videos material. All the stuff that I will be going over today is in... Um, is in uh, the Jazz Lesson Video uh, suite of PDFs. Uh, I work for Jazz Lesson Video, kind of go along here. Uh, but yeah, so all the links down there work for Jazz Lesson Videos. Also, I have a discount code. With go to the Jazz Lesson Video store on their website and type in RD5. You get 5% off your, or $5 off, excuse me, your PDF. Uh, uh, questions on that, just let me know in the chat and I'll definitely be able to uh, help you out. So. Let's begin today's uh, session here talking about minor 6-9 triads so, uh, or hexatonics, however you want to uh, think about these. So basically, uh, this first example here, we have uh, two minor triads a whole step apart. D minor is four notes each, so we're four notes in each triad, so we repeat one note. Uh, D, F, A, F, E, G, B, G, F, A, D, A, so that's D. Uh, uh, excuse me, A, D, F, D, and then back to E, B, E, G, E, right, and we land on D. So this is supposed to give the sound of a C, or excuse me, of a D minor 6, right? So if uh, D minor 6, 9, uh, because this has the uh, 6 in it, right, in uh, B natural here, and it has the 9 in it in E natural. So we're playing this over a D minor chord. The sound then playing like D minor seven, uh, or uh, you know D minor just D minor nine. That six definitely adds a cool sound to it. And something we'll be implementing a lot during this uh, session is common tone relationships. Meaning, uh, you know, even though we're playing D minor 6 9, D minor 6 9 triad pairs or hexatonics have a lot of uh, common tones with other chords. Uh, for example, G7, right? It has a D natural, has an A, right? It has a B natural. So you could play this over, you know, your first section of the blues that has G7 here. <laughs> So I try to play it on 
on the G7 bars, just playing the exercise there. So common tones are really big with, with uh, triad pairs. You can definitely play a lot of different uh, triad pairs and sounds, and we'll go through some different ones today, uh, with different chords because of their common tone relationship. So it's just something to keep in mind as we are going through uh, the material here today. So uh, like I said, minor six, nine triads, we have the ascending, same exact thing, four, no uh, four notes for each triad. So we repeat one note and then move on to the next one. We start with D minor, then we go to E minor, then D minor, then E minor. Uh, and instead of going one, one, three, five, three, we're going five, three, one, three. So, uh, that is the pattern going down. You hear the pattern going up. So I like practicing these, uh, just thinking about two minor triads, saxophone, uh, warming up on your instrument. Triad pairs are great. You know, they're, uh, they're bigger intervals, you know, thirds, and uh, that can be kind of helpful with, uh, you know, making sure all your notes speak, good for air support. You know, if you don't have good air support, you know, playing a bigger interval like a third can be a little bit more difficult. It's not going to speak. It's all the, you know, uh, kind of notes in, in a good place. So I like thinking about these just from a warm-up perspective as well as from a harmony perspective. So trying to just play my minor triads a whole step apart in all 12 keys, uh, which is what this PD in and out and purchasing it. Uh, you'll have all these minor six, uh, six nine triad pairs um, in all 12 keys. So definitely something to check out. And like I said, Anything uh, with really any scale that we go over, uh, you know, in these master classes or that you go over with any teacher uh, or any, uh, you know, at, at your school, you can always apply that scale to something that it has common tones with, right? And they'll be outside of the chord. So, for example, if we stick with this same minor 6 9 triad, right? Uh, D, F, and A, and E, G, B, D minor, E minor. Think about a chord, for instance, that has F natural as an extension tone. Right, so F natural as an extension tone could be on D7, right? That's the sharp nine. That's kind of a cool sound. So you could play this D minor triad over D7 and get that F natural to be sort of a uh, extension tone that then resolves to G, kind of like we have in our blues here, as a um, outside uh, configuration as well as an inside one, which, which is awesome. So definitely uh, checking out the common tone way. You can do the same thing. Thank you. You can do the same thing with uh, the e, e minor triad, right? E7, that G natural is the sharp nine. And in a blues context, sometimes playing the flat third is, is a nicer sounding than playing the major third. Uh, so using that is, is, is another good technique uh, as far as playing inside and outside the chord. Then you can also you know do the whole tritone, a C sharp minor triad, which is kind of interesting. So the chord. That's our G7 chord. Now I'm going to play C sharp minor triad and E flat minor triad. So check this out. I'll play a blues, and on my second chorus of the blues, I'm going to. So it almost sounds like I went in a different key when I'm playing those two triads. To be able to play over that uh, that first four bars of the blues, and it really voice leads well to that C7, right? Because think about it, over this two five one. Oh, where's my mouse going? There we go. Over this two five one here. Maybe I can actually play this. Hold on. Just so you can get the sound for the progression, right? So bum 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 be bum bum. And what I'm thinking about is C sharp on a triad has C sharp E natural G sharp, right? G sharp is the flat nine of uh, G. Also, there's the tritone, and then E flat F sharp to C and B lead by half step to chord tones of C7. E flat goes up to E, B flat goes up to C, uh, F sharp goes up to G, 
C sharp goes down to C, right? So all of those tones work really well resolving back to C7. <laughs> transitional phrases. So playing triad pairs inside of the chord. triad pairs. And we're just talking about one version of a triad pair. Two minor triads, a whole step apart. That's pretty, uh, pretty, um, you know, just kind of chopping off one part of the, the glacier, as they say, or as I say. <laughs> so let's check out the next portion here of our triad pairs. This is a hexatonic exercise again. So that means six notes or you know, triads. So these are major triads, one, three, five, three, uh, a tritone apart from each other. Now, what looks a little bit confusing at first here is this is C triad and this is F. But the two triads that we're playing so you kind of get that sound of a triad torn apart. The same thing goes when practicing any triad pair with any, um, you know, any, obviously, these triad, these triads, a tritone apart, work really well on the roots of their uh, of their uh, triads, right? So in this case, C and F sharp, C, it'll work over C major, it'll work over F sharp major. Uh, those, I mean, both of them combined, right? But there's also some other things you can use based on common tones. You know, A sharp, F sharp, and C sharp. Those are common tones of a lot of different chords. Same with C, E, and G. So you can definitely experiment around with playing those. My favorite way of doing this is to play them over either uh, just like the one, like I said, the, the roots of either of these triads chord wise, so like C major or C7 or F sharp major, or F7. Um, but you can also play these over progressions. Check this out the tune Ornithology. Here we go. This is the B flat version here. And I'll, uh, I'll pull up the, uh, the recording, but I, maybe I'll just play it. You, you'll know it when you hear it. section there is all triad pairs. Let's check this out. Let's analyze this for a second. So C sharp, E, G sharp, E, G, E flat, C. So that's C sharp minor triad, C minor triad. Then this is a little approach tone, B minor triad, B, D, F sharp, to B flat minor triad, F, B, uh, D flat, B flat. So we have minor triads now a half step apart but the reason why I want to bring this up during the tritone section is they are the tritone substitution of the 3625 here. So we have the root from the minor chord. C natural is the tritone sub of F sharp. So there we go. Tritone sub uh, triad pair all over there. Same thing happens here. B flat minor is the tritone sub of E7. So then we have B, D, F sharp, D, F, D flat, B flat. So another tritone sub. So, this is another version of what we can do with these triad pairs, and Bird wrote it. Pretty cool, right? One of my favorite things to play after that is to play uh, the tritone, the triad, Ryan, <laughs> the tritones apart. So. <laughs> cool, right? 
right? So you're keeping that triad language going. So that triad pair that I just played was A and E flat. Those are triad, uh, oops, there we go. So A and E flat triad pair. I don't know if this is in this exact page, but you can definitely, uh, this is not, oh yeah, here we go. E flat in, uh, in A. A tritone apart. So you can use these over progressions, whole progressions as the tritone subs, or you can use them as triad, uh, triad pairs just over one chord, a tritone apart. They can work in many section where you have the one, six, two, five, you play, then you can do the same thing that Bird does where he plays those tritone substitutions. So, uh, G minor, G triad to B flat minor triad. Then A minor triad. Kind of a cool sound, right? Same thing goes uh, with any two five. So like B minor to E, play B minor to B flat. So you can practice playing different uh, intervals of these triad pairs over different kinds of progressions. Tritone subs are really great, uh, but you can do the half step uh, instead, like, um, so like go uh, to F, uh, like here, over here, uh, on E7, F minor triad. So then I played uh, E flat minor triad on D7. So you can really experiment with a lot of options. And I think besides practicing them, like uh, like what we're showing you in these PDFs of playing each key and reading them through and play your own pattern, is you just think about the tonality uh, over progressions or over a tune that you're really comfortable with, like a blues, right? So then you can just play choruses of experimenting around with playing uh, different triad pairs over different chords. So I, I really like the sound of the tri... tri <laughs> This uh, kind of playing by practicing it in two different ways, playing it in the um, way of an exercise and then in the way of like improvising. Uh, over top of the uh, tune with your different triad pairs. Uh, so let's take a listen to um, the, let's go to YouTube here. Whoops, here we go. So let's take a listen to the head of Ornithology and see if you can catch this. Also, this is uh, not always the same uh, during which era of birds playing. You know, the this kind of bridge section of the tune changes up a little bit. So if you were confused and following along there and it was different, they play a different kind of version of that. But um, very interesting. So again, on a tune like this, I like playing tri uh, triad pair to tritone apart on our major chord. 
over vamps, over different kind of chords is really cool. And I like practicing them in as many different ways as possible. Uh, so the patterns that we went over today of the minor 6-9 and the triad, uh, or the tritone apart, uh, those are what we call like 1-3-5-3 three, three crossing patterns. So you go, like I said, 1-3-5-3 three, three, and then go to the next closest triad tone of the next triad that you're playing. So for example, on the minor 6-9, you have D, F, A, F, and if we're playing uh, two minor triads, a whole C, B, G, then the next closest tone of the next one would be F, right? F, A, C, F, or F, A, D, F, and then so on. The ones with the tritone apart are a little bit trickier because, uh, I keep going up the wrong way. Sorry about that. Where did we go? Here we go. Uh, the ones that are tritone apart are a little bit different, right? So we have... Uh, the next closest triad tone not being the root, which can be a little bit confusing, right? So C, E, G, E, next closest, it could be F sharp, but to keep the crossing pattern going, we're gonna go down to C sharp, right? C, E, G, E, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, F sharp, E, G, C, G, F sharp, uh, A sharp, G sharp, A sharp. And the interesting thing is if you were to play C, E, G, E, F sharp, A sharp, uh, F, yeah, F, F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, A sharp. The next closest tone for C or for uh, F sharp would be C. So you'd just be playing the same root position pattern over and over again. You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't be a crossing pattern. So that's why we go down to the fifth of that second. Tone. If you're really into this sound, someone else that I think um, does this a lot is Joe Henderson. Joe Henderson has a lot of different. Uh, kinds of these patterns in his playing. There's one tune in in, uh, in particular that I'm thinking of that's on a uh, record called Black Hope, uh, Kenny Garrett, uh, and the tune is called Computer G. Uh, maybe we can listen to it together, actually. <laughs> Kenny G, right? Uh, not this Kenny G, the other Kenny G. <laughs> Listening to you know, listening to that and then playing along to it, listening to what he's playing. He played a lot of tritone substitutions, especially on the one chord, uh, where he's almost just playing like two or three notes of the triads, right, instead of all three. Or I guess I should say one to two notes instead of all three, which kind of almost makes it a different sort of sound. But I think uh, with the intervallic way that he plays, it almost seems like he's thinking about them as triad pairs. Now, he could be thinking about them in a, in a lot of different ways, but really uh, make any option... Uh, on these chords, uh, you know, theoretically correct. <laughs> you, you know, you could you could justify anything uh, over any any chord. The context of what we're all talking about during this master class is um, kind of what he's playing. You know, kind of a different result uh, or a, a sort of an end result as to what he's got going on uh, with these with these triad pairs. So I would recommend uh, you know practicing these in the ways of playing um, them in a technique sort of sense, like practicing them. 
one, three, five, three, doing different intervals of your triad pairs. Like we have listed in the book, minor six, nine, like minor, a minor triads, a whole step apart, major triads, a, um, a tritone apart. You can do minor triads, a half step apart, like we saw with, uh, with the ornithology, um, and then trying and applying them to improvising. You know, I think it's, uh, sometimes we don't talk about it enough as to how important it is to improvise, um, when we're practicing, right? Cause that's, you know, really what we're trying to get down under our fingers. Uh, you know, even though you're practicing these in, in a academic way, which is great, we want to also free that up a little bit and try and improvise with them, which is why I wanted to take uh, so many courses during this master class uh, showing examples of uh, these triad pairs over blueses, over ornithology. Uh, we want to make sure that's always being used, uh, the improvising aspect. So um, I'll, before I wrap this up, I definitely want to uh, see if you guys have any questions. I'm going to refresh my chat here. And uh, also, like I said, uh, and if you want to purchase any of these that we talked about today, uh, you can use my discount code RD5 for $5 off. I also teach uh, at a program for jazz lesson videos called Jazz Gym, which is kind of like an online coaching times during the day. Like, you know, I think we have two to three sessions every single day, uh, except on the weekends we have one, um, where we go over specific material, theme material uh, each week. Uh, and uh, we have three little blocks of practicing in our hour long sessions. Uh, that you're in with a trainer, myself, uh, Jaden Clark, Austin, uh, Chad, uh, um, Nathan Gabriel, uh, and Spencer Hoport, and uh, Cecil Alexander are also uh, trainers, uh, and you guys can talk one-on-one -on -one with us, you can play for us, uh, but it's in a group setting too, so there's a community aspect in it, of it, which is really nice, uh, adds a lot to, we're all learning together in all different parts of our life. Uh, which is really fun, and it's uh, been a great journey so far. I've been doing it for three years now, and uh, love it. Love every second of it. So if you want to study with me down there or any of those other guys, you can absolutely check it out in the description. Uh, click the link and, and try out a session. I actually have one coming up later today. Very excited about that. I did a master class about that last week, so if you want to check that out. Checking out for some chats here. The channel, we do these live streams once a week, uh, and if there's a topic that you want us to talk about, make sure you put it in the comments, and we'll definitely check it out and uh, look for it uh, to see what we're gonna do in the future here. But I think that is uh, about it. I don't see any chats coming in. So hopefully you enjoyed the Triad Pair Masterclass today. Um, and like I said, uh, I'll see you guys next week uh, for another live stream here. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Have a great rest of your day.